it's important that we maintain mind, body, and spirit. It's all tied together. So if one element of our health starts failing, the other elements of our health, elements of our health, are going to uh, fail as well. Deep breathing, I've been mentioning that for years, that's the first place that I'll start. Some of the stuff you wanna research on your own, there's a wealth of information out there, uh, including Chinese medicine, where well, there isn't so much a focus on, per se, the seven chakras, but the energy centers. Ultimately, I think people overthink certain things, but start with a deep breath and connect with that auric field around your body. We have an electric aura. We are electric beings. That's why we're affected by these changes in the cosmos. And our planet has a field around it. And when that field goes down, as you know, asteroids can impact it. Other things can happen. It's interesting because when a human being has a weak magnetic field or aura caused by poor health, certain thoughts, certain behaviors, certain environments not being grounded, we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, they can find themselves with a mind hijacking. They can find themselves in a situation where spiritual parasites are infecting them and they don't even realize that their thoughts are not their own. This is a more serious issue in the day and age of the internet. Of course, we're being affected by the LED flat screen. My computer right now is not working, I don't know why. It's almost a blessing in disguise. I'm sure I can afford to get one maybe for $100 in a few weeks or something like that, or I can look around. Uh, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I knew that I needed to get out today and be under the sun for hours and hours and hours. Because the sun is the real light. What we're looking at on the computer is the false light. And I have even felt that addictive tendency myself, even recently. So when I speak, I speak from experience. I speak from someone who has, in a way, grown up on the internet. You know, you know in, in one sense, grown up as an adult making videos, posting videos on the internet. Now, there are people that write about psychic protection and things of that nature in these books. But when you're online and you have people thinking about you and contacting you, and even if their intentions are good, it's not about the intentions. It's about the stress on the astral body. It's about the stress on the energy body. And I think some people think that I'm stronger than I am, and I am strong. There are periods, and I, and I noticed it more so in the winter, where the lack of light caused me to feel that I needed to be careful. Be careful with getting too deep into certain topics. But it doesn't mean that the internet is bad. It means that one actually has to be a spiritual warrior to look at the internet and go, you know that thing right there? that's like sending so many people over the cliff consciously, and then you have people becoming radicalized. You also have people that are becoming more aware and more conscious, so it's a double-edged sword. So that's what I, I wanted to say as an introduction. And it's also important when things like meditation are, are brought up that people understand that they have to do the work themselves and that they have to find the answers themselves. And they have to get beyond any fears of uh, practices like deep breathing that may have been uh, institutionalized into them by a church, for example. So going back to our deep breath, and I'm not going to do a lot of demonstration, right? But I'm going to try to summarize this instead of going on for 40 minutes. But basics that people want to think about is just a visualization. Some think blue or describe blue, some golden, some white light. Okay, and I don't, I don't have a method of sharing that is that concrete, but we do have a shield, and when we power up that shield and we're in a positive mood because our emotions, of course, impact that shield, we are protected from some of those lower astral forces. Deep breathing has always hit me in the heart, if you will. As a young man, I was always interested in Kung Fu, and different techniques, and, and without a doubt, I have a suspicion that certain things I've done in past lives, like Chinese Kung Fu, sometimes I wonder if a past life was uh, living as a monk in ancient China. So certain exercises that I've seen taught to me 
seem really familiar. This is something that the instructor at the college class where I took Tai Chi. And you just imagine a rubber band. And I'm not going to get too deep into it. But imagining a ball of energy. Right? And that is your own energy that could be brought into your body to provide yourself with a healing. You know, there's hours, fortunately, that I have that were um, um, provided to me by a friend who teaches his own psychic protection classes on the internet. And he's been on the program. Uh, he's the individual that, that provided the vision of things that come in the United States with China and Russia. Well, he doesn't really like to talk about that stuff. What he really does is teach. He teaches people how to uh, clear their energies. Um, there's a lot of debate whether it's even possible for people to be clairvoyant. I think it's all within each and every one of us, but some people are more gifted than others. And so I've noticed there are parallels with the things that I've learned from him and others with regards to grounding and just the simple concept of bringing in earth energy from the base of the earth into the root chakra and then down to the center of the earth again in a circular motion. And there's variants to this. While at the same time, and visualizing a color, an earth color, orange, purple, just something, any color really, and then visualizing the cosmic energy, the cosmos coming down and flushing out the back channel, as well as the spine, those energy centers connecting with the root chakra and those two coming together. And so looking at this just briefly um, online, this is uh, not a new concept. You know, and this goes back to uh, ancient yoga, and I haven't studied it per se, but there's something about this that does seem to be familiar to me. So these things like grounding and meditation, of course, doing that, it could be done you know, with the uh, uh, sitting Indian style or in the lotus position or in a chair. It's not really about how you sit, but it's, it's tapping into that breath, getting in your body, and being in your head, if you will. You know, being able to see things from that space. You hear a lot about the heart-mind connection. So I think that's really important, you know, to, to be able to be tapped in consciously but also to come down and be in the heart and there's studies that talk about the heart frequency and when we're in that space how much stronger the uh, the human aura is so I think that's interesting some of the other things that maybe I could talk about in the future but I'll mention them now once someone gets in the habit of grounding their energy and then bringing the energies in together and clearing out the whole auric field grounding out the auric field the manifestation of a rose, for example, where that rose, that astral rose, if you will, is used to bring in kind of like a fly trap and pull out those thoughts that we're stuck on or those victim pictures. Sometimes we could be stuck in victim consciousness and we may not even realize that magnetically the same things keep happening to us because of what's going on in our subconscious, also known as the monkey mind. So a healthy practice of grounding and connecting to the cosmos so I've never officially taken yoga but I've always seen that yoga pose of hand up and a hand down and to me that does provide a real sense of the heart opening up And when I'm moving, and it's also an exercise, again, I'll engage in certain exercises. I call it the windmill effect. And a lot of this you see in Aikido, but there's something very activating about some of those particular exercises, especially when you do it with a partner. This is why I've been talking about, you know, I don't know how to fully articulate it, but it's almost within. There's a spiritual side of the martial arts and how it's connected with all of this. So with the internet, we're a lot more connected psychically than meets the eye. 
Facebook is pretty invasive to me when people are messaging me all day long, and they do. To the point where I've had to deactivate my Facebook page several times. And I don't do well with those back and forth digital text-based communications. Um, I need to have, especially lately, um, more time to myself. So I, I think that I'm developing, in the last few minutes that we have on this tape, this is going to be an ongoing discussion. Thank you for subscribing to the On Demand channel. Disarming the spiritual parasite is the name of the game. And it looks like we're low on power. So we will be back in a future video. Thank you for watching.